there, there may be areas where the uh, scientific community has a majority view and a minority view. And it's important for students as they understand the nature of science to be able to see the way in which sometimes the majority is right, but sometimes the majority is later proven to be wrong. And that what's important in the progress of science and in the discussion of other kinds of issues is that you are able to look at the controversy with an open mind and that you make the decision based on evidence rather than on the basis of some kind of nose counting of how many people think this and how many people think that. There's a false belief out there that it's somehow unconstitutional or against the First Amendment to allow a teacher to criticize Darwin's theory in the classroom. And that's just absolutely false. It is not unconstitutional. In fact, it's more consistent with the Constitution to allow a teacher to present alternate views than it is for him just to present one view. And so in those school districts that allow teachers to do that, they don't face lawsuits, or they certainly haven't faced lawsuits that have succeeded, because there's nothing wrong with that. If Burlington School District allowed Roger DeHart to do the things that he wanted to do, there was no, absolutely no constitutional problem with that. And anyone who thinks that they could be successfully sued based on allowing a teacher to do that is just in another world. I mean, that's just not the case. If you're teaching a controversial subject, uh, you don't want to lean too far in one direction or too far in the other direction. Um, you don't want to give undue prominence to one opinion a, as distinguished from another one. School districts face jeopardy if they uh, allow the science classroom to be used as a means of religious indoctrination. Uh, but they also face jeopardy if they engage in viewpoint discrimination, if they take one side and make it an orthodoxy and exclude any viewpoint that disagrees with that. That's as much a violation of the Constitution and puts them in jeopardy as if they uh, went in the direction of simply turning over the science classroom to a Sunday school teacher. Well, the Constitution clearly protects the uh, expression of viewpoints uh, again, with some sensitivity in the educational context that the teacher can't simply uh, uh, spout off uh, opinions that, that aren't relevant to the curriculum, and the teacher has to be sensitive to the fact that the classroom is not there for his benefit, it's for the student's benefit. But to the extent that there is an attempt to suppress the criticism of a viewpoint or an attempt to impose a kind of orthodoxy in the classroom, uh, the Supreme Court has been very clear that school boards have no right to uh, uh, remove offending viewpoints simply because they disagree with them. Uh, there was a case involving uh, a school board that removed books from the school library because they disagreed with their contents. And the Supreme Court recognized that while school boards have broad authority to decide what kind of curriculum they're going to teach, they don't have the authority to remove or restrict viewpoints with which they disagree. Again, subject to the teacher's need to be sensitive to staying with the curriculum and to respecting a variety of different viewpoints on a controversial subject, the school board doesn't have the right to impose a particular viewpoint and insist that the teacher stick with that viewpoint without uh, any divergence. It's unfortunate that in our politicized society that a lot of curriculum decisions are not based on what the best is for students, but what some interest group is demanding. And that's true in science education. And so a lot of the threats and intimidation against teachers who want to criticize Darwin's theory in the classroom comes from these interest groups who write letters and send lawyers to school districts saying, ah, if you allow this, we're going to sue you. And school districts being fairly conservative in their pocketbook and not wanting to lose hundreds of thousands of dollars on a lawsuit that they don't want to fight, uh, understandably try to squelch the offending teacher. 
What they don't understand is that in most cases, these sort of threats of lawsuits are completely without basis. They're false threats. They're really like blackmail threats. You know, we won't sue you if uh, you don't do this. But in fact, they're false threats because there's no basis for a lawsuit. Teachers who teach uh, that there is criticism increasingly from scientists of Darwinism uh, have no problem at all normally until the ACLU or some other outside group uh, tries to intimidate the school board. And they're threatened with lawsuits, which they're afraid, wrongly, will lead to a lot of expense for the local school district and, uh, and a loss in court. And that's because uh, when religion as such is taught in the science classroom, uh, you will get a court to overturn it. But that's not what's at stake here. We're talking about science, not religion in the classroom. The situation with Roger DeHart is a really good illustration of the way in which groups like the ACLU, the National Center for Science Education, the People for the American Way are operating. They're depending less on litigation and more on intimidation right now. What they're trying to do is, rather than sue school boards who have teachers like Roger DeHart teaching alternative views, what they do is they go in and they, they arouse concern and they in, intimate, maybe threaten lawsuit, but they never actually get around to, to suing these school boards. Usually they don't need to. And the, the, so the way that school boards and teachers can defend themselves is to inform themselves about the real legal situation. The school boards believe, of course, that by and large, that they should uh, encourage uh, teachers to bring controversies about science or any other subject into the classroom and let all the different sides uh, be heard. But then they get uh, visited by the ACLU and others who want to intimidate them and threaten them with lawsuits. So. Uh, that's happened all over the country. Now, there are many places where the ACLU doesn't uh, catch up with them, and they are going right ahead and teaching it. And where they call the bluff of the ACLU and say, we will teach it, and uh, if you don't like it, you can sue us, the ACLU backs down because they can't win a lawsuit about teaching science in the classroom. So the best thing that school, a school board can do is uh, inform, get, get its lawyers informed about the legal situation so they can rebuff this intimidation and say to these groups, no, look, we think this is pedagogically appropriate, it's certainly scientifically appropriate, and our students have a right to, to hear both sides of this issue, of this scientific issue. No one is saying that you shouldn't teach Darwinian evolution. What they're saying is if there are scientific arguments against it, you should be able to hear those.